I've not shared this story until a year ago. And what I've learned is how hard this topic is. And so I'm, I'd like to speak words of healing over people who have endured that type of abuse. And what I went through on a weekend with a non-family member is nothing compared to what some of you went through day after day after day. Counseling can help. Pastoral therapy can help. But please hear this, Jesus can heal. The chapter is entitled, I am in the storm with you. Are you prepared to break that down? <laughs> can you go there? I can, I okay. can. Um, because I opened this chapter by sharing a story that's the stormiest season of my life. And uh, the, the presence of Christ in it is what uh, has served as uh, gasoline on the fire of my faith for, for many, many years. I was 12 years old. Uh, I grew up in West Texas, as I mentioned. Uh, I grew up uh, you know, playing football and baseball and, and uh, uh, all the things that kids do. Uh, I was prepared for cologne and, and have a crush on a girl, but I was never prepared for what happened and that is sexual molestation that came my way as a result of a, an adult male. He was, um, he presented himself to our family as a mentor, as a mentor. And not just my family, but the family, uh, families of about four or five people in our small community. And he didn't have any sons. And he, he just kind of came across as, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I wanna hang out with the guys and I'll teach them how to catch a baseball and you know, with grill burgers. And, and, and to be honest, I remember him as a, as, as, as a charming guy, charming guy. And um, uh, what, what we didn't know is that he was a predator and he had a high out for, for young boys. It, it all came out when he took us on a camping trip. Uh, keep in mind, I'm an old man. I'm 65 years old at that time was, you know, in the mid 1960s. No cell phones is the point I'm trying to make. We, we got out there, we had no way of getting back. He took us way out in the country and he began unpacking the suitcase, the, 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 the sleeping bags and the tents, but he also unpacked a box of, of whiskey. And he began to sleep his way uh, through the sleeping bags and drink his way through the bottle uh, for Friday night, all day Saturday and most of the day Sunday. And it was, it was things I don't need to go into detail on, but it was just a nightmare. It was a nightmare for all of us, all of us. So by the time we, uh, went back uh, to our little town. He dropped us off at each of our houses. He did so with the words, now don't tell anybody. They won't believe you. If they believe you, they'll blame you. It, kids can't process this, right? you know? So I didn't, I didn't. It was Sunday afternoon. I went in, I just felt like filth, just felt like filth. Didn't tell my parents what happened. I never did. They went to their graves. I never told them the story. Uh, but they uh, mentioned that that morning at our church, there had been a communion service. And boy, did I have a longing for a communion service. And so this is what I did. After they went to bed, after I'd taken a bath and put on my PJs, I went into our little kitchen of our little house and I decided I'm gonna have a communion service. So here I am, a little 12 year old boy, uh, freshly bathed, freckles, and I'm digging through the refrigerator looking for some grape juice and bread. Well, I still can't find stuff in the refrigerator. I couldn't find any then. But I found some milk and potatoes, potatoes from Sunday lunch. And, and if you can envision, I put the milk in a glass, I put the potatoes on a, on a saucer, and I took them over and I sat there and I celebrated the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I thanked him for saving my soul. Now, here's the reason I tell that story. Jesus met me in that moment. He met me. He met me in that moment. Don't press me I, and, and don't say, how do you know he was there? I just know he was there. I just know he was there. I felt his arm around me, felt his presence. And here's what happened. He healed me. He healed me. Oh my God. I didn't grow up with a fear of a authority or I didn't cower away from other grown men. He just healed me. Somehow I knew. Somehow I was new. He met me in that storm. Now, there are people who are listening right now who have been through those kind of moments. You have, you have. And maybe you're hearing my version of that story and you're saying, now, Max, why did you sense Jesus then? My answer is, I don't know. 
I don't know, but that's what I needed in order to be healed. There have been other times I've been through storms and the feeling wasn't that profound. But the message is Jesus enters those storms with us. Here's what I can tell you for sure. You're not alone in your storm. That was the message of the most famous miracle in the Gospel of John. I guess it's the most famous. Anybody who's heard about miracles has heard about Jesus walking on the water. Has it ever occurred to you that, that Jesus didn't have to walk on the water to still that storm? He wanted to be seen in the middle of the storm before he spoke to the wind and the waves. He wanted the disciples to know, I'm here. I'm here with you. I'm here with you. And when they saw Jesus and they saw him walking on the water, all he said was, I'm here. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'm here. Don't be afraid. And really, the, in, in Greek, all he says is, I am. He just gives his name. I am. Don't be afraid. So my dear friend, what, what I would like to say to you, if you feel like you're in the middle of the storm, I don't always know why, but I'll tell you, I know who. I know who's there with you. I know who's there with you. You just talk to him. You lean into him. You tell him you're afraid. You break bread. You have your own little communion service. You get down on your knees. You open your Bible. Just a, just a tiny step of faith. Just a tiny step of faith. Don't let your heart get hard right now, please. Just don't let it get hard. Just turn to him. Turn to him. You know, call a friend. Call a pastor. Call TBN. You know, uh, text somebody, but come back off the ledge, my friend. Come back off the ledge. Don't give in to despair. Just, just, just take a step of faith. He'll meet you in the middle of this storm. You're really, I know you feel like you're alone, but you're not. So what's, what's happened is you've, you've been conditioned to be a secular thinker. All of us have been, so we got to fight against that. There are supernatural presence around you. Angels, the Holy Spirit. God's presence, and Jesus Christ, your advocate. If you'll meet that little boy in the middle of a West Texas kitchen, he'll meet you wherever you are. He will, he will. That's the promise of that message. I've not shared this story until a year ago. And what I've learned is since I have shared this story, how hard this topic is, how hard this topic is. And so I'm, I'd like to speak words of healing over people who have endured that type of abuse. And what I went through on a weekend with a non-family member is nothing compared to what some of you went through day after day after day with a trusted relative. Okay, I realize that. And you shared your stories with me. You've told me what it's like. And you shared with me how even now intimacy triggers memories that are the deepest, darkest part of your life. Counseling can help. Pastoral therapy can help. But please hear this, Jesus can heal. He can heal those memories. He can heal those hurts. The biggest thing for you to do is to believe that healing is possible. And, and so I'm asking right now in my spirit, Lord Jesus, go to this person, go right now, wherever they are, and visit that painful memory with them and just heal that moment, heal that memory, heal that. And, and tell them the truth. They can be better. They can. Tomorrow does not have to be today. Next week is not like today. There's a new version of that person you're making, Lord. So turn to that, turn to that Savior, my friend, turn to Him. He really wants you to have a healthier, happier tomorrow. And I believe that that's the reason you may have stumbled across this conversation. Tack att du hjälper oss att sprida budskapet om Jesus Kristus som kan förvandla och förändra ut över hela vårt land. För utan dig så kan inte vi göra det här. Så tack och Gud välsigna dig.